Welcome again to our course on Biodesign, Strategies for Innovation and Design on Bioengineering. Today we're going to talk about a very interesting topic, business models. So let's start. So the objectives for today's class is to first understand the different types of business models that are typically used in the medical device field, including the relative advantages and disadvantages that they are going to have, so that you can choose wisely among them. Also, I want you to determine how to choose an appropriate business model based on the unique characteristics of your medical innovation. And also, uh, in order to consider your customers when thinking about monetizing your products. Okay, so when thinking about different types of products, you're also probably talking about different types of business models. And in this case, there are gonna be traditionally eight different types of business models that are gonna be, at the very general sense, um, traditional or that you can utilize in every single type of, the, of product in medical devices. In this case, you're going to have a disposable business model, a reusable business model, an implantable business model, a capital equipment business model, and so on. In this case, the additional types of business models are going to be services, fee per use, over the counter models, and physician sales, so direct physician sales from your product. And this constitutes basically the range of business models that you can traditionally use in all the different types of medical de devices. Nonetheless, it's important for you to know that you can also innovate in the type of business model that you can use in, in terms of combining them or also in terms of creating a new way to uh, make economical benefits from your products that are not included in these eight different types of business models that we're going to explore today. Okay, so when thinking about the first type of business models in medical devices, this is probably the most traditional one. This is the disposable product business model. Uh, in this type of business model, you're probably going to include things like syringes, uh, surgical coats, or even razor blades uh, that are disposable. Also, you can use any other different type of medical product that at the very end you're gonna use quickly and dispose it because of whatever reason. Uh, in this case, you're gonna have two types of disposables overall. You're gonna have the low cost end and the high cost end. And as you can see, as you are gonna see in all this topic, um, what you're what you're gonna uh, be able to detect is that there are different characteristics in terms of the business models um, that you have to fulfill in terms of creating a sound way of monetizing these products. In this sense, uh, in terms of disposables and in any other business topic, uh, you're gonna analyze the margins, the sales, the importance of the intellectual property. The, 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 the barriers to entry and the benefits to entry and a certain market, the, the training that the customer requires in order to make these, uh, to use this device, and of course the clinical hurdles and the financial requirements to bring your product to market. In the case uh, specifically of disposables, what you're gonna see is that the low cost um, disposables are probably going to have a very low importance on IP, but they are probably going to be neutral or high in other topics like financial requirements because low cost medical devices probably require a very um, sophisticated way of manufacturing the product so that the cost is low. Nonetheless, in other types of disposables, you're going to see that those characteristics might change radically. So that's something to uh, notice all the way along. The other type of business models is the reusable business model. Um, here there are devices uh, mainly surgical or, um, or other type of uh, medical devices that are not as usable or as long lasting as a capital equipment that we're going to see later on but of course it's not as disposable as a disposable. Uh, basically the idea of a reusable is that you can use it a certain amount of times either through sterilization or because it's non-sterile uh, and it's gonna undergo a certain um, number of cycles of use or sterilizations and at the very end it's gonna be disposed but it's reusable because it can be used at least twice. Uh, in this sense, there are products uh, from surgical tools to pulse oximeters that can be included in this type of business model. Something important to think about the reusables is that the price cost can be higher than disposables uh, because, of course, those can be used more than once. 
The next type of business model depends on the, uh, on the implantability of products. So there are products that you're going to see as intraocular lenses, peacemakers and knee replacements that are implantable. If those fail, of course, are replaceable, so they will be disposable, but because they are implanted in the body for more than 30 days, they are considered implantables. Uh, these type of uh, devices, because of the regulatory hurdles that are probably significantly higher than many other different types of uh, medical devices, uh, the cost probably is going to be higher and you're going to require a higher force uh, workforce of sales to commercialize your product. So something important to notice here is that an implantable requires a value proposition in a business model that um, incentivizes people and doctors to put this thing in for long periods of time in a patient and of course the sales and the cost should also resemble uh, that long lasting characteristics of these products. Going to the, into the next type of business model, there are the capital equipment. So capital equipment is basically a reusable product, medical device product, but that has a significantly higher cost than a reusable product. Uh, in this sense, uh, capital equipment uh, probably constitutes things like C uh, CTs or MRI imaging systems, patient monitoring system and anesthesia equipment. What is going to happen in this business model is that you're going to have some product that is very costly and you can have several financial uh, ways to finance um, customers from uh, getting this product and of course it probably is going to be um, taken into consideration that in the price there's going to be a fee for maintenance and or um, uh, watching of the products so that they work properly throughout their use. Uh, in this term, uh, margins, sales and importance of IP tend to be high as well as other things like customer training uh, which might be low for some things like patient monitoring systems but might be significantly higher for things like MRIs in case uh, it's, a, it's a new system that differs from traditional ones. Uh, also there is the service uh, business model. This is a very simple one you provide a service and um, you, you ask for a fee that it could be monthly or semesterly or annually uh, so that the customer, the doctor or the patient can receive that service. Uh, among the services that you can encounter nowadays there are wireless monitoring systems of medi or medical apps in which you can have to pay a, a fee for a service. Um, but that it's a, 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 a service that lasts you, say, you can say a year or two or indefinitely. Also some imaging visualizing systems are uh, blunt examples of these types of business models. Uh, next we have the fee per use business model in which uh, there are things like hyperbaric chambers and UV light treatments um, in which uh, there is a capital equipment but uh, a capital equipment that also in which the doctor has to pay a fee for every time they use the, um, the equipment because either a disposable is being used or because that's the, the way the, the company wants to monetize. Another very interesting example of this type of business model is the LASIK eye treatment for eye surgery in which uh, even though there is a capital equipment that the, that the hospital has already acquired, every time that a doctor wants to perform a procedure, let's say for correcting myopia, uh, the doctor or the patient in this case has to pay a fee for the use of the product. There is also a very important business model which is the over-the-counter business model in which pregnancy tests and other things that you can uh, get into a pharmacy store uh, are included. This is a very simple business model, you know, the patient goes, buys the, uh, this uh, product uh, and the only thing that you have to consider is that probably in over-the-counter products uh, the clinical hurdles are going to be more than neutral uh, and they are going to be, uh, they are going to tend to be high if the risk of a misdiagnosis or a mistreatment is high enough for FDA to concern. Um, one of the last business models that we're going to ex explore today is the prescription business model. In this one, um, there are different types of products that um, we can recall. For example, a glucose meter. A glucose meter is going to be prescribed for a patient that has already been diagnosed with type 1 or type 2 diabetes. 
Um, the interesting part about prescriptions is that uh, you're going to be prescribed for a certain type of a strip or a pharmaceutical that is going to be delivered through a combinatory medical device or in the, in the case of the presentation we're showing a ventilator or a nebulizer for asthma treatment. Uh, this is a pro both of these products are probably going to be prescribed, such as drugs. Uh, nonetheless, there are medical devices and uh, the business model is going to be um, through a prescription. And finally, we have uh, the phys direct physician cell. Uh, in this business model, the physician is going to act just as a salesperson promoting the use uh, of the device and in this case we have uh, several examples like widen widening teeth systems or uh, earbuds for hearing aids. In this case um, the clinical hurdles and everything else it's going to be quite low um, and, and ranging neutral. Nonetheless the sales investment because it's a direct physician sell is probably going to be high because you have to buy in the physician before the physician actually tries to sell your product for you. And with this we have concluded our topic on different business models. I want to assure you that even though there are traditional business models out there that you can take into consideration to create your own business models for your medical products, you can always innovate in ways that nobody else has imagined to monetize your product, which can be a very interesting way to innovate in medical devices. Not everything has to be a new device, a new system for treating something. It can only be a new way of providing this or giving access uh, of this type of product to another type of population. With this, we have concluded our topic. Thank you for watching. Um, see you later.